On this preseason edition of Around the Horn, we catch up with sports writer Peter Gammons, talk shop with Gateman GM Tom Gay and coach Cheryl Maxwell, and spend a whole day chasing down Red Sox manager Bobby Valentine. and I'm here with the Peter Gammons. Thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, so you've been around the Cape League forever. Uh, what, what's the importance in development of, of players from the college level into the professional level? Well, I think it's the, the, it's the one time when not only are they playing with wooden bats, but they're playing every day. And that's, there's a great deal of, um, you know, that's hard to play every day. Um, they're completely away from home. And it's, uh, it's really their first taste of professional baseball. And I think that's really significant. And I think you see certain guys step up and play better. Uh, it's the first time some players hit about 180 in their lives. You know, they, they're used to hitting 400 all, at wherever they go. So it's a great experience. They, they, professional baseball always has failure involved. And a lot of times there's, a, there's a, a, a stretch of failure in the Cape that they have to go through. Just to get it out of the way. Yes, and, and you learn from it. Yeah, I'm sure. And then do you have any particular memories about the Gateman, um, whether it's with John Wilde or any other? Well, John was wonderful. I mean, he just loved the game so much. I mean, he's such a great friend. And I, I thought it was fascinating that so many people that played um, in over the years um, for Wareham were so upset. I mean, I heard from people like uh, Daniel Bard and Matt Merton and, um, you know, Mike Fontenot and, and uh, uh, Terrio and a lot of different guys. I mean, it was, you know, I w we got the news. I heard from all of them and they were really touched and they loved it. And it's, uh, um, uh, I, I think that because he made players feel as if he were giving them a summer home that I think that they really appreciated it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we all love Miss John. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking Certainly the time to great. do that. I really Thanks appreciate it. Thank uh, you. I was noticing you guys look mighty tan right now. I'm a little jealous. You had a, a trip down to Florida to check out some of our guys? Well, that's the excuse we use. We go down <laughs> and see some players. No, we did. We saw a couple of players down there, a couple of kids from Franklin Pierce and uh, from Flower Hill it was a good time. Now, are you scouting new players, potential roster fillers for the team, or are these players that you've already decided to, to ask to join the team? Well, when I was down there, we're, it just so happened that Franklin Pierce was there. So Joey Flynn, who pitched for us for the last two years, was there. And uh, the catcher coming in, uh, Matt Walsh, was there. So we wanted to see, I wanted to see him play. Uh, we also went over and watched uh, a Cody um, What's his last name? From Chapman. Chapman from Clay Chapman from Clay uh, Chapman. right from Southern Florida Southern pitch at uh, Eckerd one day, and uh, determined that he would be somebody we'd bring in as a temp. So great, it was worth it. And then I saw Fred Shepard from Amherst College that we're bringing in as a temp left-handed pitcher. We, we looked at the roster. We were at 26 around probably the beginning of February. Um, and that's when the team started playing, and we've had, I think it's five injuries already. So crazy. Um, so as we see kids who we think would be able to, to play at this level, at the Cape level, um, we don't want to add them to the roster because we don't want to fill the roster up. We want to keep space available. So we bring them in as temps. And I, I would say at least three of the kids that are temps right now probably will be signed before June, say 15th, 18th. Great. Because um, they're doing very well. Don't and, you agree? Yes. And then you have to compensate for kids who think would be going to the College World Series. Oh, right. And you might not see those kids till the end of June. So if you got, you know, four or five kids that are in the World Series, that shortens your roster, and especially if they're pitches. Well, we were talking about that the other day. I think right now there are at least five schools that we have players coming from that are in the top ten, right, and probably will, well, definitely probably will make the regionals, and they may go on to the super regionals. So you have to be, you know, be ready for that with the tempers. 
Wow, so why is it then so important to keep room on the roster? Because it seems like it's pretty flexible already. Well, you only have a roster of 30. Mm -hmm. um, and that stays open. So if someone gets hurt at this time in the year, you can release them and fill that spot. But you want to have space on the roster when June comes along because there are kids who all of a sudden blossom and maybe they haven't committed to a team. And you might want, you know, you might need a shortstop. You might need a first baseman or something so you can bring them in. So you don't want to fill all your roster spots. Plus, a roster of 24, I think we agree, is manageable. Okay. Last year we had... We probably had too many kids on the roster, and it, it created some problems. Okay. So you're looking to avoid that by m maybe keeping some flexibility right. with the roster. And then you always want to keep some space, kids that are junior draft eligible, and decide not to sign. If they're looking for a place to play on the Cape, you'd like to have a spot open for them. Right, right. And then I think this year, the middle of July, I think they have to sign yeah, by. It's interesting. Major League changed the uh, draft signing uh, from mid-August, I think it was August 18th last year or 15th, it's now July 13th. Oh. So it, that's good and it's bad for us. It, it's good because now you, if you have a junior who's been drafted and, and doesn't sign, you know you're going to have him right after the 13th if he doesn't come early to play. Some, some want to come here and try to you know, boost their stock, get a get better signing bonus. But then again, this, we've seen that backfire on kids too. So, <laughs> um, so it's. But at least by July 13th, we'll know now. So we may have, say, three kids this year that get drafted, and decide to stay home and, and negotiate a contract. And then if they don't sign, we can bring them in on July 13th because we'll keep them on the roster. That's the other reason for keeping space on your roster because you can always pick up extra players later. Okay. So, Coach, with all of the uncertainties that you've both been talking about, how important is it to have those seven returning players on your roster right now? It's important. I mean, you need to have a nucleus of kids that have been through the Cape and that know, you know, what the challenges are. In other words, you get kids that in their regular colleges have never failed, but then when they start using the wood bat, it's a whole new uh, territory for them. And most kids fail when they come to the Cape, and you have to make them understand you're only going to get a hit if you're real good three out of ten times. Mm -hmm. So that means seven times you're not getting on base. And so uh, kids have to realize just what a big adjustment it is, and some of them mentally and emotionally just can't handle it. Do you find then that... I mean, how do you manage that? Because the season itself is so short, especially when you have the players who are coming in from their collegiate seasons and are being drafted, so you're losing them toward the end. How do you, how do you juggle all of that and keep kind of a, like you said, that nucleus and, and keep that team dynamic together? Well, I think what, what happens is a few of us being older coaches, you know, some of the kids relate to that. And then we always have a younger coach or two on the, on the uh, roster. So that helps, too, that they've got somebody to relate to. And we've had the good fortune in the past three, four years that we've had guys that have played pro baseball. So kids, you know, gravitate to them, you know, just to see what it's like. And, you know, for the last three summers, we've had major league coaches on our roster. So that's been good. Yeah, that's wonderful. And yes. speaking of your coaching staff, we recently added Ron Polk, mm -hmm. which is huge. I actually got to speak with him last season when he was hanging around Spillane. He's the father of SEC baseball, baseball collegiate hall of famer. Um, how, how is that going to help you in, in all of this? Well, I mean, I think just, I think any player, especially players from the South, know who he is. And I, I think he demands respect as soon as he walks on the field. So I think that's going to be a major uh, advantage that we'll have this year. Some of, as, as Coach just said, these kids have never failed, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. They come here, they think they're the king, you know? And they find out quickly they're probably not, or at least they're not the top dog all the time. I think having someone like Ron here, they can now talk to someone who's been through everything. Mm -hmm. And they've read about him, and they read about him in books. They've probably read his book on how to hit. I mean, he, he'll, he'll have them here this summer. We'll all be reading them, I'm sure. Because <laughs> that's, that's what we were talking about in the press box last year when you interviewed right, him, if right. you remember right. Yeah. So. 
I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, when we first started talking about it, I was a little nervous of having Cooper and, and Ron, two head coaches who have been head coaches, in the dugout at the same time. But they seem to be getting along fine, so we're hoping that it's all going to work. That's great. So what did you do to court him? Or did he approach you? How does that work? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think Cooper's known him for years. Cooper's known him for a long time. Um, and he, when you were interviewing him, he happened to be coming. Uh, he was here on the Cape, and he had gone to all the different fields right. and seen the different teams, and he just he liked wearing him. So whatever reason. Of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> What's not to like? The Cape League, the general Cape League tryouts, invitation only tryouts, are coming up on the 9th um, or the 10th? Ninth. Uh, the 9th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is there anyone that you have your eyes on in particular for that day? Not that, not that as I sit here I could could tell you any oh, particular names. Hush, I've hush. seen, well, I've seen a list of those who are initially who have been invited. That doesn't mean they're going to come because they could sign. Um, there is a couple of players that were that I've looked at and I've talked to their coaches already. One particular is a catcher because we lost a catcher already. Mm -hmm. um, so we may be looking to pick up a catcher. You, you can always have three catchers on your roster you, and be comfortable. Um, so that's one thing that I was looking at. But unfortunately, the, the tryout being as late as it is this year, we're already going to be playing a game before the tryout. I mean, we have a game on the 8th uh, right. in, in Newport. So. Oh, so does that benefit you to some extent? Because, I mean, granted, it is still a game, uh, but it's a preseason game, so it's mm -hmm. not counting toward your record. And maybe give you a sense of where there might be some holes? I mean, I do. I'll let the coach speak to that. Well, what happens is it gives you an idea of just, you know, how the kids are going to react together. You know, team unity is, on the Cape is so important. It's not always the team that has the most talent. It's a team that gels together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't think that the players understand it. I, I know a lot of the fans don't understand it. They, they, they look and they say, look at all this talent. How come you're not doing well? But that's what it is. It's funny. And you don't know what's going to make a team gel. Mm -hmm. um, I know three years ago we had a team of great kids, but they never gelled. Right. And it reflected in our, in our record. Hmm. The last two years, I think the team came together very well. And um, I don't know if we were as talented as we were three years ago, but we did better. Interesting. So th I think that's, you know, it's a very, because it's a short season. Yeah. Um, and you're taking kids from all over the country and throwing them on a field and say, you know, go hit against number one every night. <laughs> right, right. How do you prepare for something like a preseason game against a team that you see maybe once a year? Well, we try to get in a few practices beforehand, and hopefully the kids that aren't in the college playoffs are thrown on their own at home, so when they come, they're ready, ready to go. Mm -hmm. But I think the preseason game to us, I, I think it's important because it gives us a chance to look at the temps. I mean, if you remember last year, we played with one, one kid from Tabor mm -hmm. um, Academy. Um, we had a coach out there playing, which was a lot of fun, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we just didn't have numbers. I mean, um, but it still, it gives, uh, you know, those kids, the local kids who you pick up to fill the roster spots for a week, 10 days, it gives them a chance to play one, now they're in the history books. They played on the Cape, as long as they get into a regular season game. And two, then we can place them. And, and Cooper does a very good job of placing players. He, he's dedicated that if a kid came here and stayed here a week or stayed here two days, and they want to play ball, he's going to find them a place to play. And he does a very good job of it. And that's one thing that Tom and I kind of agree on is like if they're local kids that are talented let's give them a shot here on the cape we can help their career so it works out well yeah and the gate men have a somewhat of a history of, of following that right it's in carlos yeah, sure. Pena kind yeah. of come mm -hmm. to you guys in that yeah way a long long time ago well john wilde always looked for the local kid he always looked for, tried to get a player from the ivy league mostly harvard because that was his his school and someone else in the room we know. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but we've had, you know, Brown. Uh, we've had kids from Dartmouth. Um, so, you know, I mean, we, we try, like Coach that we Columbia tried. Columbia last Columbia, summer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we really do try to find the local kids and give them a shot. Because, you know, baseball doesn't get a lot of respect in the Northeast and co at the college level. Because it's, who wants to sit at a baseball game if it's 40 degrees? You know, right. that's what they're playing in. So. Right.
It's not, it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> but they're down in Florida, and we get to see them in Florida, and it makes a difference. Right, right. So you are starting to prepare now for, you have a banquet um, when the players first get here? We do. What does that involve for those of us who, well, myself not included, uh, who have not been a part of that? Well, we have the kickoff banquet um, every year. It's usually the day before, and it is the day before the opening night. Um, and it's just a get-together. We have all the players who are there. If their family are here, we invite their family. And the, the organization, uh, interns, host families. It's, it's a fairly, and we just, it's just a nice night to get together and let everybody get to meet each other because some of the players are just walking in the door. They may have just got off a plane and they, they're drove, driven to the, uh, what we used to have at the Bay Club, but this year it's at Solano's in Onset. So just a good time, just to try to get the season off in the right state, you know, right step. Okay. Do you know if, I, I heard that in past years, the players have put together like a little kind of- the skit? Skit, yeah. <laughs> You know, that's, it's funny because you, you need a player who's been here a couple of days <laughs> who can say, okay, I'm going to pick on Coach Maxwell or Cooper or somebody, and that's what they do their skit. I don't know. That's, we leave that up to the players. If they can get something together, that's great. Maybe you can take mm. that over. Ooh. <laughs> you can direct it for them. I have time. Absolutely. It's only it, In the past, it's been what? Maybe 15 Maybe minutes. Maybe 15 10? minutes, yeah. yeah. And it's just good, clean fun. It's, you know, they take a shot at everybody, and that's good. I'll see what I can do. Okay. See it's, what I can pencil in. It's a good bonding experience for the kids. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's. I, I think what comes of it too is you can point out, you pick out who's going to be a, one of the leaders on the team. Oh, right. You know, the kids that step up and, and are not embarrassed to get up and do silly things, but. And who's going to be a pain in your butt for the rest of the season? Well, could be. But. Just keep at you. <laughs> Um, was there anything else, uh, anything else that you guys are excited about with the upcoming season? Anything that's changing at Spillane or with the, the organization in general? We put a lot of work into the field. Um, we finally, last fall, got the halo behind home plate glued down. Yeah, and, it looks uh, really good. Left field was resodded and... Yeah, the field looks, is in its best shape that it's been in years right now. Um, it took a lot of money and a lot of time um, and a lot of people working all year um, just to get it that way. But it's, it's much better than it was last year. Last, unfortunately, last summer it was in tough shape. We've got some players that uh, are doing very well who have been here for you know, maybe two years ago now, like uh, uh, Matt Bonds, who yeah. was drafted by the Red Sox, has, has been throwing really well. He's at uh, single A right now in Greenville, I believe, is in South Carolina is where he's been and there's been some good articles about him. Uh, Perlman, Max Perlman, the kid from Harvard, is, is doing well. Um, Why do you sound so surprised? Well, it's just that, well, <laughs> it, well, Max was a great kid. He was great to have on the team for two years. He was a leader. It was funny, no one really looked at him, meaning Major League Scouts. Mm -hmm. They weren't really paying too much attention to him, but he's done very well. Um, Springer is doing well. Um, Brandon Workman's moved Workman. up to Salem now yeah, with the Red he's Sox. At, at a oh, plus. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's with uh, Anthony Ronaldo that played for Brewster that Barnes hooked up in that game uh, that all the scouts were looking at Ronaldo. And then they looked Matt at Barnes him. ended up stealing the show with 14 strikeouts that night. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, this is funny because when you read the articles, they're comparing the two of them. All right. right. You know? So and they're still going head to head with each other. <laughs> Jeez. Luke Merton's doing well mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, Yankee organization. And I see, oh, Jed Bradley yeah. is with uh, Shea Vucinich. Yeah, they, I mean, we have, the same a, club. we have a lot of guys that are moving up in the next couple of years. And then we'll probably we have be seeing them at Fenway. Bruce Kern, Josh Slats, and Josh Mueller that are all in the uh, Colorado organization, all on the same team this summer. No kidding. And they've all been friends since they played for us with the Gateman. Yeah. That's wonderful. And well, that must be really nice for them. So, you know. A lot of them make friendships here that, that, that last, last forever. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, the thing, that this true. will be my sixth summer with the Gateman. 
and that I see all the work that the organizational people put in mm -hmm. and it's a year-long process you right. know people don't realize we meet all winter long every month and these people are always working and they just love their baseball and the host parents I mean end up being friends with these kids forever going to their weddings and yeah so it's, it's not it's, only you know it's not only the baseball end of it it's it's a life experience right well so how can other families in the community become involved in this organization well I mean it's it's easy enough to get involved in the organization I mean if if you're interested you can contact myself my wife uh, Sherry, who's in charge of a lot of that, um, or any of the coaches. I mean, just just talk to someone who's in the organization now, and then what we usually say is come to one of the meetings. Okay. Sit there and just listen to what's going on. Decide what you might be interested in, um, and then obviously we can always use the help. I mean, we have 38, 39 people who show up every month to those meetings, and every one of them is doing something that makes makes the whole organization tick. And they're all volunteers, which all is volunteers. what blew my mind when yeah. I first went to a meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's really incredible. So. It's, a, it's a great organization. People put a lot of time and energy. They do. It's, you know, for those people out there watching this, it, it isn't just, you know, baseball. It's, it's just see the book, come down and see the game and a couple of guys playing baseball. It's a year round. It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of time and effort. To, to do it. I mean, this every year it gets more and more national exposure. Um, again, this year they're coming in, there's a, a production company coming in to film a, a new film uh, similar to what was Touching the Game that came out about eight years ago, I think, or maybe, maybe a little longer than that now. So they're going to do an update of that, and they've actually already selected one of our players to be one of the players they're going to follow around. I didn't so, realize that. Yeah. So it would be nice. How do you feel about that? Do you feel that, that would be a distraction at all? Or? Not if it's done right. I mean, I don't, I don't see I don't a problem with so, it. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, I mean, then. it's, again, it's the, these, again, these kids want to be pro players. That's what they're going to be doing when, if they do make it to the show. So right. it's, this is a good way to introduce them. Good training. Mm -hmm. And then the Gateman name will live on forever. Yeah. Well, we're Posterity. out there. I mean, we have Ben Crockett. You know, he's the uh, direct, director of player development for the Red Sox now. Right. Um, so he's a former Gateman. Um, Danny Barr. We're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and you really are everywhere. A week ago, watching the uh, Red Sox 100th uh, yeah. anniversary mm -hmm. game, the announcers kept saying, look at Nick Swisher over there on the bench. Oh, on my the, goodness. Uh, on the dugout fence, watching everything, taking it all in. I mean, there's a Gateman, you know. And yeah. Out, out come Bill Selby, that coached for us, that played for the Red Sox, and so it's all over. Yeah, you know all the connections. Yeah, I, I was sitting at Fenway in the seventh inning when when Swisher got up with the bases loaded on Saturday, and I said to the guy next to me, <laughs> "Knowing Swisher, he'll hit it out just to, just to, <laughs> there it goes." <laughs> so it's your fault. Yeah, it was my fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's interesting when we go down south, you know, in the early spring the open in college baseball, and these kids, all they talk about is the Cape Cod League. Hmm. I mean, it's still the premier league in, in the country. The crew and I have taken a road trip today. We finally landed here in Hyannis at the Cape League Hall of Fame where they, we are celebrating Bobby Valentine Day. Bobby, of course, as you know, is the manager of the Red Sox. He was hugely successful in Japan huge proponent of the Cape League and when he smiles he looks like a people elf and I just want to shake his hand and I will do it. What I'd like to do is get a present a nice official, majestic, real thing for whatever it's worth Bobby V Boston Red uh, uniform that can be presented to uh, the Hall of Fame here and displayed anywhere they like other than the men's room. <laughs> so thank you all very much.
something really loudly so maybe the guys who are who are back in Boston can hear it, okay? We're gonna say, let's go Red Sox all together on the count of three. Are we ready? One, two, three. How to be the winner is always to try to always do your best. If you participate in anything that you do, whether it's the test that you're taking in school or playing a sport, you just give your best at all times. And if you give your best, you are definitely a winner. Okay. Okay, I'm here at the press conference at C3 TV in Dennis. It's my last chance. Go big or go home. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling it. I'm ready. Do you have any advice for the players who are coming into the league this year? Well, you know, it's so much easier to remember uh, the experience uh, today because they have their iPhones and they have their cameras. But the, the idea is... Uh, the advice is for them to understand how lucky they are, one, that they're chosen few, that this is a very fleeting time in their life, that it will pass quickly, and to enjoy every moment of it. Um, I'm a huge fan. Could I shake your hand? <laughs> <laughs> sure, right after the show. This is so cool. <laughs> Bobby B. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Spillane Field, Wareham's most beloved ballpark. As someone who loved baseball and loves baseball and grew up thinking about the Red Sox and cheering for the Red Sox and wanting to be a baseball player, this is the next best thing. Uh, I mean, this is a 35-year career involved with baseball, um, between radio and now with this. So, my dreams have come true. And they won. And I got two rings. Sorry, 2007. And that one is 2004. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for watching the preseason edition of Around the Horn. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday at 4 during the season for updates on your Wareham Gateman.